Welcome back to the Cardioid YouTube channel and podcast after a long time. It's good to be back from a break. Also, what a way to be back. Today, we are discussing the landmark Emperor Preserve trial. So, if you are listening to or watching this channel for the first time, consider subscribing. We discuss the recent advances in cardiology, cardiac imaging and cardiac interventions. Also, we touch up on the various topics of cardiology. We already know that SGLT2 inhibitors decrease hospitalization in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. The results of DAPA-HF and Emperor reduced trials have clearly shown the benefits of dapagliflozin and empagliflozin in patients with HFREF or heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. In the recently published Soloist WHF trial, sotagliflozin was found to benefit diabetic patients with heart failure. There are multiple mechanisms by which SGLT2 inhibitors can benefit HFREF patients. These include number 1 natriuresis, number 2 glycosuria and osmotic diuresis, number 3 improvement in glycemic control, number 4 antihypertensive effect, number 5 weight reduction and number 6 direct cardiac actions. The direct cardiac actions include regulation of ionic homeostasis, improved myocardial energetics, improved autophagy, decreased inflammation and decreased myocardial oxidative stress. It was hypothesized that SGLT2 inhibitors can possibly benefit patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. The Emperor Preserve trial was a double-blinded trial in which around 6,000 patients with class 2 to class 4 heart failure with ejection fraction more than 40% and anti-pro BNP more than 300 uh, picogram per ml or more than 900 picogram per ml for AF patients were randomized into two groups. One of the group received empagliflozin in the dose of 10 mg per day, the other group received placebo. This was in addition to the routine therapy. The mean age of the patients in this study was 72 years. Female comprised 45% of the study population. 75% of the patients enrolled in the study were whites. Around 15% were Asians. 45% of the patients were in Europe and 10% of the patients were in Asia. 12% of the patients were in North America and 25% patients were in Latin America. Most of the patients in this study were in NYHA 2 functional class, that is around 80% patients were in NYHA 2 functional class. 18% of the patients were NYHA 3 functional class. The mean BMI of the patients in this study was 29 kg per meter square. On an average, patients had systolic blood pressure of around 130 mmHg. Mean LVEF was around 54%. One third of the patients had ejection fraction between 40 to 50%. Another one-third patients had ejection fraction between 50 to 60 percent and one-third patients had ejection fraction more than 60 percent. Around one-third patients had ischemic etiology of heart failure. Around two-third patients had non-ischemic heart failure. Around one-fourth of the patients in the study had heart failure hospitalization in last one year. Around 50 percent patients were having atrial fibrillation at baseline. Around 50 percent patients were diabetic at baseline, around 60% patients were hypertensive at baseline and around 50% patients had an EGFR of less than 60 ml per minute at baseline. Patients were followed up for a median period of for 26 months. The primary outcome was a composite of cardiovascular deaths and heart failure hospitalization. The trialists found that primary outcome occurred in 13.8% patients in the empagliflozin group and 17.1% patients in the placebo group. There was a statistically significant reduction in the primary endpoint in the empagliflozin group. It proved that empagliflozin is superior to placebo in improving heart failure outcomes. The benefits were similar among the patients with or without type 2 diabetes mellitus. Heart failure hospitalization occurred in around 9% patients in the empagliflozin group and around 12% patients in the control group. 
there was a statistically significant reduction in heart failure hospitalization in the empagliflozin group. Death from cardiovascular cause was seen in around 7% patients in the empagliflozin group and 8% patients in the control group. There was no statistically significant difference in all-cause mortality in both the groups. This proved that the improved outcome with empagliflozin is primarily due to decrease in heart failure hospitalization and not due to decrease in mortality. Empagliflozin was found to decrease total number of hospitalization more than the placebo and this was statistically significant. Empagliflozin also decreased the rate of decline of EGFR. In the Emperor Preserve trial, empagliflozin appeared to be effective across the entire spectrum of ejection fraction, but there may be a decrement of benefit in patients with higher ejection fraction. So what lessons do we learn from this trial? We conclude from this trial that empagliflozin may be an effective drug in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. It decreases primary outcomes in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction primarily by decreasing heart failure hospitalization. Currently, we await the results of the DELIVER trial which is ongoing and it is assessing the role of dapagliflozin in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction.